All right, welcome back, everybody. So this week is going to be an extra special treat. Um, Renner Italy allowed me to do filming um, in their facility. So you guys are going to get to see some of the highlights of what they do. I think it's very important for you guys to understand um, and thank the people that made this possible, okay? All the staff at Renner Italy, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much to Irina. Uh, hopefully I pronounced your name right. My Italian is terrible. Um, actually, I don't know any Italian. So, um, but she followed me around all week um, while everybody else was taking a break. We would go shoot videos, and so uh, she spent countless hours um, chopping these videos up for me, and I've compiled them together in um, a video series that you are going to get to see over the next couple weeks. I also uh, want you guys to give a great thanks to uh, Marco Buffetti and Daniel at MK Sales. Uh, the dedication that these guys have and the sacrifices they make and the work that they put in to bring you guys the best that Renner has on the market. Um, you know, you guys are going to get to hear more about this, what we did, but I cannot thank those guys enough. And you guys need to thank them as well because they're the ones that are bringing in the best of the best from Italy. And then everyone else is reaping the benefits. So just something to be conscious of and something to recognize what they are doing for the industry, okay? So thank you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna take a look in the lab here at Renner and I'm going to show you guys some of the testing equipment and how they go about testing some of the coatings before they're even uh, formulated and then what they do after. I know there's been a lot of discussion about how the European companies test versus uh, the US companies so I'm going to show you a little bit about that so come on and let's take a look. All right so before they actually uh, produce a coating they have a machine here that they can put the resin on that will uh, show them what the surface tension looks like so it's going to show them um, if it's going to how it's going to affect on the edges um, then from that they have a microscope that you can take um, so if you have like something that may have some micro foam or defects in it they can put this over the surface and take a look at it at the microscopic level to determine how to make changes uh, to the coating. Then a lot of guys we know about the, the Tabor resistance, so they put a piece of sandpaper on um, and will spin it to determine the scratch and mar resistance. They also have impact, so you would put uh, a piece in there and then drop it from, they would do, uh, I'm assuming meters or centimeters, and you would drop that on there and tell you what type of cracking may occur with the coating. Then they have a glass break here that comes down and uh, will hit the surface. And then this is a different type of Tabor machine here that kind of represents uh, someone cleaning cabinets with various chemicals and it goes back and forth. Then they have uh, a heat treatment uh, for plastics to determine um, how uh, heat will affect. And then this one's pretty cool. This is probably my, my, my favorite uh, rheology uh, modifiers. So they'll put this in there to determine the thixotropic nature of the coating. Okay, how. so my favorite part so far from this is what you guys see me do all the time with uh, different chemicals, coffee, bleaches. So this is where this is all tested here. So they have different uh, bottles for the different, uh, like in the United States we call it ASTM. 
they have a different um, set of standards here, but they have like olive oil, um, coffee, uh, wine, um, they have the pencil hardness test. Now one of the interesting things with this is I've actually not been a huge fan of this. They have a new test that they're going to be running where it puts a diamond on it and scratches it so they can get more of an accurate representation than they get with the uh, pencil hardness test. I also asked them a question I thought was pretty interesting because a lot of guys go off the KCMA and talking about if you do it in a vertical or flat and they also the uh, has it has to be covered. Um, KCMA does it a little bit differently um, in the US where it will be on a vertical surface but I just wanted to show you guys the difference in how they test flat versus vertical and they do both they do both types of testing here I know there's a lot of question about whether or not um, the testing is the same but they they have some of the standards are more stringent here in one area than it might be in over there but they're also testing ASTM and what is required here in Europe and with KCMA as well. I'm going to take you guys around and show you uh, where they test and uh, formulate the different products. So down this area right here is where they formulate all the exterior hydro oils. Um, one thing that I didn't know that's very interesting uh, that we all learned today is that you can actually tint uh, the hydro oil to a solid color or a dark color which is very very cool or you can create some of these um, special effects by using different colors and using sponges or different methods to wipe to create um, different things with the hydro oil. It's very cool. Alright so you can also do uh, metallics as well with the uh, hydro oil. It's a really cool look that you can achieve. All right, and then over in this section over here, where they're standing, is where all the water base interior is done. And then on the other side of that, they have another station where they do um, the 838 solid floor coating, and they do a little bit more with the uh, hydro oil. All right, and back in this area is where they test and formulate all of the uh, plastic coatings for uh, different various plastics that they use and then we can swing around and go this way where they do all the water base uh, UV which would be back in this corner over here and then this will be the UV water base area all right so now we're standing outside taking a look at how they study exterior coatings here at Renner it's pretty interesting uh, the way that they go about this. Uh, let's go, let's take a look at some of these. So for instance, what they'll do is they start with a formulation and look at it till it fails. And then when they, next year, they'll, they'll, they'll look at it in two or three years. And when they do a new formulation, they keep comparing and contrasting to the old ones so that they can keep improving um, and they have just tons of different samples from metal to wood. Um, they have exotic woods back in the back side. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. It's a, a foam with a plastic. They have plastics over here. Pretty much any outdoor um, system you can think of. Now this is pretty cool over here. This, they built this house over here. Um, and it has uh, hydro oil on it and they show the different ways in which you can paint it and apply the exterior. I thought that was uh, pretty cool. So I, I'm, I'm really glad that they were doing this. I, I walked by and noticed that they had done some crosshatch adhesion tests on some of this exterior uh, to test the wet adhesion. So once moisture penetrates, how's it going to affect the coating? Is it going to peel off? Um, How's it going to affect that, that water resistance? Right, so I thought this was interesting too. Uh, with the hydro oil, they also have a place where they test all the decking and they lay it flat. And then <clears throat> the cats and animals come over here and you can test the chemical resistance of cat poop. The effects of 
the effects of pets on your deck. All right, so I want to show you guys something really cool uh, on their small production, how they filter um, the paint. It goes through and recirculates and they filter it up to four or five times before it actually comes out in the can. So that's why you don't see a lot of like, uh, when you're spraying like sediment and stuff in renter products, or you have like filters that are clogged up because they're filtering it so many times. And one of the cool thing that they have is they have these evergreen cans that have a polyethylene in them that you can pull out and recycle the can. It doesn't work with all products because they found that it has some reactions to it, but uh, really green, forward thinking with this with this type of packaging. So I thought this was really interesting. We were walking back this way. I noticed that this curtain was going up and down, and I asked them what this was for, and this is so that they can keep the plant um, temperature control. Okay, so as I was showing you earlier, when they go through the filtration, they uh, they have different checkpoints in when they're checking the material to go out. So once it's already um, packaged, they bring it over here and they also do a final spray out to make sure that everything is good before it gets to the end user. So you have like three, three different quality control checks before the paint's going out uh, to the customer, which is amazing. I, I haven't seen that with any other company that I've visited thus far. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a brief look um, of the solvent setup. Uh, same similar system, they have lab and everything here, but I just thought it'd be cool to show you guys the production on the solvent side as well. So I'll just have her pan around a little bit and show you what's going on. Okay, so this is pretty neat here. They got a truck that they're bringing in the raw material and they're gonna put them in these tanks and you can see all this piping uh, for the solvent based plant here. Really pretty cool sight to see. Very cool. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys this area here is where all the tents are made. Um, they keep it all separate so that there's no contamination between machines, but this will do both the water base and the solvent tents. And then one interesting thing with this particular plant is that they made it so that they could swap over to water base uh, immediately if they need it for production in the future. So they thought ahead when they were planning with this solvent based facility that if they need it they can switch over to water so that's pretty cool so we're still over here in the solvent based facility and um, as we were walking by i saw this uh, epoxy and i wanted to just point out the clarity on this which is unusual for epoxies a lot of times they will yellow um, over time so this is really cool this is the xbm161 and then also they have a magnetic paint that you make a stamp for and then basically it's magnetic underneath it and it creates these different shapes now you can also do it by hand but this is pretty cool that they have like a stamp that you sit in and then it'll just make this shape consistently so that's a pretty cool um, unusual system there okay so we're here now at the color lab and we're gonna go here and take a look um, some cool things about this is that they do both uh, solvent coloring and water-based coloring in here and they'll take a batch of product, um, do like 25, 30 uh, gallons at a time and see how the color consistency is over time. Um, so just another emphasis on testing to see how all these colorants react over time. They also have the different tinting machines so they want to see the accuracy of the machines as well. Um, that's why they do these larger batches because they want to see after 25 gallons is it staying in spec um, so they can make improvements on that as, as they need to. So as we continue on with all the testing, I want to show you guys some other test equipment they use when they're developing coatings. Uh, this has actually uh, come up recently in a post that I made uh, where I did a water test um, and they were talking about the accelerated weather testing so this is used primarily for uh, preliminary testing when they're uh, developing a coating. They want to put it in here and see if it's going in the right direction 
And then once it's going in the right direction and it's not failing here, uh, then they're going to move into some other testing they have in this room and also this xenon test chamber. So while we're here talking about this, so this will do two different things. One, they can put it in here and put it under high uh, ultraviolet light. We'll pull this out. Um, and they can check uh, color retention and then also the flexibility of the coating. As you can see, this one has already started to curl but the coating itself is still intact. They don't have any like surface defects or anything like that. Um, this one you can see that it's starting to lose some color retention. So they come in and they measure these uh, weekly to make sure that they're on track with what they're doing. So let's come look at this one. This is really cool. They've got some wheels in here. So each one of these wheels are dunked in water and uh, they have different cycles they can run them in. I think this they said that they were running these like on a 20 minute cycle so it's in the water for 20 minutes and then this wheel rotates and then it's simulating different types of UV lights like sun, uh, incandescent, the different types of, of lights. So Renner is all about test don't guess. They want to make sure that the coatings that they're putting out are going to last as long as they possibly can for the end user. Okay, so I want to show you guys something really cool. We're going to call this uh, Renner CSI. Um, this, let's go in and check this out. This is really, really some cool stuff. So in here, they test, uh, they can test resin. So like if they have a truck, they get a resin manufacturer. They have the truck sit out there. They bring it in here and test it before they accept the raw materials um, before they make paint. They can also they have a solvent base station here and here where they can produce their own resins so that they're not reliant on some of the bigger resin manufacturers in case they have shortages or they need to create a certain type of product for certain situations um, based on their experience over time with how things work because a lot of times some of the bigger manufacturers may make a resin for metal or plastic and it doesn't work for wood so they need to make changes to it in order for it to be applied on different substrates so this is where they where they do all that work in here okay so now we're going to go upstairs and i'm going to show you something really really cool where they can actually take a sample of paint or a sample that you've shot and tell you all the chemical properties and the materials that were used in it. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so as I was saying downstairs, this machine right here, they can take resin, paint, and they can put it through a process um, that will take the chemicals, solvents, resins, and it spits it out into a database that they've created so that they can do comparative analysis on their own products, competitors' products, um, or just R&D research in general. The coolest part to me, though, uh, was over here. They were showing us a, a panel. Uh, I'm just going to use this one. Oh, here it is. That a customer was having a, an issue with random uh, bits of trash in it. So they were able to put it on this machine here and look at it with the various layers and they were able to identify that it was fiberglass from the filters in the paint booth and it was happening randomly so they were able to explain to the customer what was going on. It wasn't in the paint but they were able to give them a solution to their problem. So another thing that happened too that I thought um, <clears throat> one of the guys was telling a story that they had a customer that was using uh, another sealer underneath their product and ran it through a comparative analysis here and found out that it actually wasn't their product underneath it, but they were still able to help them uh, create a solution for that particular problem. So basically, you can't hide from CSI Renner. Yeah, so we're about to go into the warehouse. You know, we've been talking a lot about shortages. Um, 50,000 tons of material in here. I don't think that uh, they have any shortages going on. I'm gonna let her pan around. Um, we were just talking to what's pretty cool is all, all this is computer controlled um, down to the forklift operators. So when they pull 
material. They know exactly where it's coming from, where there's empty spots. Um, just absolutely amazing how much material is in here. Let's go take a look at their showroom. Samples for days in here. All right, so this is really interesting. Um, this was a test they did on shutters uh, worldwide uh, with a lab called Atlas. And they studied how the coatings were going to age over time. And these are the actual shutters that they used. So they had some in Phoenix. So these are the ones that were in Phoenix. Miami, Florida. Uh, these were in Russia. Then you have Singapore. And then you also have Australia. So um, really, really cool that uh, they can show you how their product's going to weather um, over time. And again, like I said, they worked with a, a lab worldwide uh, to do that. So this was a project over here that they did with some architects called Color Tune. And just various really cool um, effects. I think this one right here, this one stands out to me as my personal favorite. It's a very cool, very cool look. And then I think this project ended somewhere in here. Now this is pretty cool too because this is foam. Uh, foam, foam backing. Very cool. And then as we walk down, uh, just more and more samples. Uh, this one right here, I really like. Uh, this one kind of stood out to me. This is a really cool looking effect with a gloss over it, like cells in it with different colors. And you have metallics and all kinds of colors. Then over here, they have the examples for glass. I like this one here. That one's really cool. And they got like a crackle, crackle on glass. And then these here are all the uh, wood flooring products that they have samples of. I'm assuming those are hydro oils. And then over this way, um, all the way down this side here, they have uh, metal, PVC, all kinds of different examples for that. This one was pretty cool right here. These, uh, these shakers have a, a soft, soft touch effect on them. Very nice. And then they also have samples in the center here. When I, was, when I came in the other day, um, these right here I, stood out to me, the effects that you can achieve. And then this one's really, really cool with the high gloss on it. So yeah, so this is the showroom. Um, really cool. If you ever get a chance to come, come and visit, I would highly recommend and just get ready to do lots of testing. So if you're not into test, don't guess, this is probably not the place for you. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, a huge thanks to everyone at Renner Italy, all my friends there, uh, Irina, for the videos. And thank you, Marco and Daniel at MK Sales for making this possible. I would be remiss if I didn't say that the whole idea from the water-based revolution came from my visit with MK Cells some two years or so ago. And now here we are. So I have to give Renner props for starting the water-based revolution. And as you can see, um, they're going to take it even further. The amount of testing and dedication that they have to water-based it's just absolutely incredible. And I'm very excited to share with you um, in the coming weeks a lot of the other things that are coming down the pipe and that they will be doing. So as you can see, they're very much part of the test don't guess mentality. So I will leave you with that. Remember guys, test don't guess. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>